We're having our showers of blessing. God is good. And um, I hope that uh, those who have been sick are feeling better. Good. (laughs) And that those who are watching, if you're feeling a little bit down and out, I pray that our praise time will give you some perspective on what God has for each one of us in his kingdom. Whenever I come into God's house, I just, um, especially when I get get to come up here and praise the Lord, I I can't help but uh, feel like he's made me happy and glad. It doesn't matter what's been going on. It can be an awful day, and it has been. But you know what? Praising the Lord just takes it all away. I've been praying, and um, I have a feeling he hears my prayers. I know he does. He gives me that assurance. And I am just grateful to him for that. And I hope that even though we didn't do our 10 days of prayer, I hope you're thinking about it all the time. Make prayer a part of your life, a constant breath is is the I mean prayer is the breath of the soul. And I know that if I'm not praying, I'm kind of feeling a little way down. And um, God just wants to hear our prayers. And so we're going to praise him, continue to praise him with he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Glad that I'm here. Glad that Josie's here. It always, always makes me happy when I see Josie. And glad that Patty's here and, and Faye. God is so good. And I could say everybody's names pretty much. Almost everybody. But let's, let's praise the Lord. I will enter his courts with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. And if he's made you glad, don't you think the joy of the Lord will be within you? It will be your strength, and it will be many other things. In fact, I think he even gives us the thoughts that we need every day, that moment by moment, to keep ourselves connected to him. And if you're thinking about somebody right now that needs prayer, or you have a praise, take that little card in, in the pew in front of you, and uh, if you could just... Uh, Write it down, raise your hand, and Rob is ready to pick it up and uh, have the pastor bring those petitions and praises before him. So the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He 
kiss the living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The word of faith is nigh thee even in thy mouth. The word of faith is nigh thee even in thy mouth. The word of faith is nigh thee even in my mouth. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And when we're, we're praising God, there's something that He asks of us. He asks us to glorify Him. And how do we glorify Him? In the way we live, in our character. Do we have his character? That's what I have to ask myself all the time. And a lot of times I'm failing, but God doesn't want us to give up because he doesn't give up on us. He never does. So we will glorify the King of Kings.
Good morning. And a very happy Sabbath welcome to each one of you. Once again, it is an absolutely beautiful day. A little liquid sunshine, but that's okay. It's a beautiful day because it's the Sabbath day. What a privilege we have. What a joy it is for us to come together and share this time of worship. Worship of our Creator. Worship of our God. It is an absolute delight for me to welcome each one of you to the worship service of the Greensboro Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have a number of guests with us today, and we're delighted that you have chosen to come and share this time of worship. We're thankful that we have the opportunity to share our worship service over the Internet, and we welcome everyone who joins us on YouTube. Sometimes we have some technical difficulties, and um, we live in a technological age makes a lot of things possible that just weren't even dreamed of a few years ago. And nevertheless, even though we have all this potential, there's all kinds of potential for gumming up the works. But... Um, Nevertheless, we're thankful for the opportunities that God has given us to share His Word with all those around us. As we move into our church update section, I just want to remind everyone of our Glow Track ministry, the privilege that we have to share in different formats the Word of God, and I invite each one of you, if you, especially if you have not done so, to adventure into this ministry. Take a minute following the worship service, look at all the glow tracks that are in the racks on the wall of the hallway between the foyer and the fellowship room. Choose one or two. Take them home, read them, and then pray that God will send someone your way and impress you, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one that you can share light from God's Word. Remember that we continue our blood pressure screening in the church library following the worship service. Everyone is welcome to have their blood pressure taken and tracked if, if necessary. Remember that March 30, the youth of our church are sponsoring a talent show. Uh, you received an insert uh, in your bulletin, and I trust that you will take advantage of this opportunity to fellowship together. March 17, Sunday, March 17, is our annual Ted E. Bear Tea. And <coughs> again, we encourage uh, all the ladies of the church to participate in this fundraising um, opportunity. And uh, the last a few times have been a tremendous success, and everyone's had a great time, and I encourage you to do that again. Our midweek Bible study continues on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and we are continuing our journey through the Gospel according to Moses, the book of Deuteronomy. This week, we're on chapter 33, Deuteronomy chapter 3, and I encourage everyone who can to come and share this time of study, fellowship, and inspiration. We close the Sabbath hours as a church family at 5.30 this evening with our Vesper service in the chapel, 5.30 for
for our Vesper service today. And again, everyone is encouraged to come and share together. We're called to worship today by the 97th Psalm. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord, you who do right. Praise his holy name. I invite you to join in singing our hymn of praise, hymn number 27, Rejoice, ye pure in heart. special time in our worship service when we have the privilege of going before the throne of grace, the throne of the universe, the throne of the creator, sovereign God. It's an awesome privilege that he has given us as he grants us audience to share with him everything that's on our heart. A number, quite a number actually, of prayer requests and praise cards have been given this morning, and so I want to share them with you. 
This first one says, God is good. He brought me here safely. And now the time is near for me to go back to J.A. Please pray that I'll have a safe trip back home. We're delighted that we can share in that request. This individual writes, I thank God for answering prayer for my neighbor and my family this week. God is so good. I love to read answered prayers. This is wonderful. Praise God for his grace and mercy. What would we do without a precious Savior as the Lord Jesus Christ? Pray that I will be successful in my upcoming examination this week. There is perhaps only one influence greater than an exam to bring a person to prayer, and that's the foxhole. (laughs) Sometimes... When you're writing that exam, you feel like you're in a foxhole. But um, yes, we want to remember all those who are attempting to do their very best for themselves and for God in their academic work. This individual writes, I am thankful for the Lord keeping me and my family safe, especially during this week. Please pray that that we will continue to trust in him. This individual is giving praise for my healing of the sprained ankle and bad cold. Praise that when I fell last week, God had me in his arms. I didn't break anything. And Josie, we're very thankful for that. We join you in that prayer. Um, Many thanks for protecting Josie and Rex. Uh, and uh, Jim uh, and a friend is having a strong battle with drugs and so we want to uh, remember this request I believe for Jim who is having a strong battle with drugs Um, this individual writes despite many years of experience I'm still known to get in a hurried rush God granted grace. I did not break my hip or visibly dent the sidewalk. (laughs) Praise God for his long-suffering and goodness. Yeah, we want to join you, Stephen, in that praise. This individual is requesting prayer for unsaved loved ones, but also giving praise for this beautiful day. Although it's raining, I'm so thankful for another day to worship my Lord. Yes, indeed. I am so delighted for sharing these words of praise and thanksgiving. Um, I know that it's music to God's ears. Okay, this individual is requesting prayer that Jesus would fill Jimmy's heart with his desires, his peace, and his wisdom and that he would hunger to know God's word and apply God's word. Um, There is a request for the restoration of uh, Jimmy and Kimberly's marriage and for my friend's salvation and my friend's health. This individual has a lot on their heart, and I want to acknowledge that God hears and answers our prayer, and I want very much to affirm everyone who has indicated their praise, their thanksgiving, and their request for prayer. There's something that we as a church family need to remember in our prayer in a very special way. I think uh, a number of you are aware that 
Jody Lay, who has been attending our church for about three uh, or three and a half years or so, had a massive heart attack Wednesday night and passed away yesterday afternoon. Her husband, Drew, is having a really difficult time. As you can imagine, this was a bolt out of the blue. There really seemed to be no indication this was coming. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a devastating experience um, for a spouse to all of a sudden within less than 48 hours be confronted with no longer having their partner with them. And so we want to remember Drew and all of the family, Jody's children, grandchildren, as they go through this very difficult uh, loss. So please continue in a special way this week uh, to remember Drew and Jody's family as they grieve the loss of their loved one. As I am going to share in my sermon, we are in the middle of a raging war. And we need very much to remember that there is an enemy who is doing everything that his cunning can do to destroy the people of God. It's a blessing that we have to go to the throne of grace together, united, in raising our petition to God. There are some of you, probably many of you, who have something very special on your heart, but you did not fill out a card knowing that you would have an opportunity to share that very special thing with God in prayer and would like to indicate that by raising your hand. God sees and God knows. And I invite everyone who is able to join me as we kneel together for prayer. Father in heaven, We want to acknowledge with gratefulness the privilege that you have extended to us to come before your throne of grace, to thank you, personally thank you, for the many ways that you have demonstrated your great eternal love for each one of us. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to know you as a God who cares. A God who intervenes in the lives of his people, his children. And so we have come, Father, bowed before you to say thank you and to praise you for your goodness and mercy. You have told us that when we come before your throne, that there we will find mercy and grace to help in our time of need. And Father, you know these Requests that have been made with honest sincerity in faith, 
trusting that you will hear and answer according to our need and according to your will in a way that will bring honor and glory to you. Father, there is a a very special request that we have that you be very close to those who grieve today the loss of their loved one, Jody. Father, we ask that you will be very close to Drew. We pray that you will be with Paul and Melissa and Caitlin, the entire family. Father, please comfort them and draw them to you that they might rest in your arms of love and that through this experience they might be drawn closer to you. We are continually reminded that we live in enemy territory and the warfare is fierce. And we just ask that you will give grace to sustain, to strengthen, to encourage each one of us, as we face our own struggles and battles. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to come to this place, a place of refuge, that we might collectively, together, demonstrate our love and devotion and worship We ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will make your presence very real to each one of us, that we might respond with worship in spirit and in truth. Father, we are grateful for the opportunity that we have today to witness the beginning of a new life in Christ. And we just continue to ask that all we say, all we do in this service will bring honor and glory to you. Father, we thank you for hearing and answering our prayer, for we pray in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we're taking just a little bit of a different direction than is our normal routine, and our young people are all excited about taking up their offering, and you're going to get to do that in just a minute. But we have a very special um, service a baptism that we're going to enjoy and experience today. And I would like to introduce to you our baptism candidate, who is Faye Bullock. Would you come forward, Faye? Thank you. Faye Bullock, I think most of you know, she has attended here um, for some time. She took a little break between 
when she first started attending and most recently. But uh, she has decided that the time has come for her to be baptized and to join God's last day people. And so we're very thankful. I've had opportunity to visit and study with Faye. Um, she has uh, Seventh-day Adventist relatives, a daughter who's in Boston, and a brother who lives in Las Vegas but has come to visit. And I would like for him to stand, if you would. Um, Brother Bullock, we're very thankful, and I know you're thankful that you have the opportunity to witness uh, the baptism of your sister. And so, Faye, I would like maybe for you to say just a word of testimony as to how you love the Lord and why you would like to be baptized. Uh, I love the Lord because he, he has been with me through a lot of um, situations, uh, bad times in my life. And um, uh, he has be, been, been so good to my family and good to me. And I thank him for my health and strength. And I just love God. I praise his name, and I, I just worship him, and I worship Jesus. And I'm so thankful to be here today to be baptized because I want to get closer to God. That's, that's it. I love him. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, Faye. And as is our custom uh, here in the Greensboro Seventh-day Adventist Church, we like to share with those who are witnessing this event, just what it is that our baptism candidate is agreeing to and what she is part joining a part of. And so, Faye, um, I am going to read to you the um, vows, the baptism vows, and give you an opportunity to respond. Faye, do you accept the Bible as the Word of God and the ultimate authority of your life? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit that they have always been and always will be and that they created the world and everything in it in six days? Yes. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sin that he's now in heaven as your best friend, and that he gives you his Holy Spirit to help you obey him. Yes. Do you choose to obey his Ten Commandments, which include keeping the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath? Yes. Do you look forward to the soon return of Jesus in the clouds of heaven, and will you help as many people as possible to be ready for his coming? Yes. Do you believe that people who die are sleeping in the grave until the resurrection and at the second coming of Jesus those who have been faithful to God will be given new bodies that will never die. Yes. Do you believe that God gives special abilities to all of his people and that the gift of prophecy has been given to his last day church? Yes. Will you help God's church with your influence and abilities as well as your tithe and offerings? Yes. Will you honor God's love for you by taking good care of your body, eating and drinking only what is healthful, not using alcohol, tobacco, or illicit drugs because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Do you want to be baptized as a public expression of your commitment to Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you believe the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a special message to give to the world, and do you want to be a member of this church? Yes. Folks, you have heard the affirmation. What is your pleasure regarding fellowship of Faye Bullock subject to her baptism? Would everyone like to welcome her by raising your hands? God bless you. And we will get ready for the baptism at this time. All right, young people, now it is your time. So if all the children will 
Go ahead and meet with Mr. Rob at the back. It is now time for the uh, children's offering, which is to provide financial assistance for those at uh, Tri-City Christian Academy, followed by our children's story, which is being led by my daughter from Chile, Steffi Toman, up front. Okay. Happy Sabbath. I have a story for you. It's uh, something that happened to my great-grandfather. He was a pastor in Chile, because I'm in Chile, very far away from here. And he was a pastor there, and he was in charge of collecting offerings and tithes from different churches. And he lived in the south. There were no cars there available, so he had to go in his horse, church by church, taking all the money, because that was to build more churches, um, to give some money to missionaries. They really needed that money. Yes. So he had the pockets full of money because he had collected money from many churches. And he was in the forest, in his horse, and all of a sudden he heard that someone was behind. So he looked, and he saw two gentlemen in their horses. He got a little bit nervous because he had a lot of money. And he said, what if they want to steal this money? But then he thought, no, I'm just imagining things. He kept riding his horse, and he started praying, asking Jesus to protect him and the offerings. And then he got nervous again. He looked back, and they were still there. So he said, I'm going to go a little bit faster so I have some distance with them. And he did that. But when he started galloping, guess what they did? The same. That's when he could tell they wanted to take the money. He was galloping so fast until he got to the bank of a river. And he had been there before, so he remembered that there was supposed to be a bridge somewhere there to cross that river, and that was near a police station. So he started galloping as fast as he could. He saw the bridge, and he crossed that. He got to the police station. He couldn't breathe. He was really tired, and he said, I need you to help me. Two guys are coming behind me, and they want to steal the money. And the police said, okay, where are they? We just crossed through the bridge. They looked at each other. Okay, can you repeat the story? And he said, but I'm telling you, they are trying to steal my money. They are coming right after me. We just crossed the bridge. They looked at each other again. And they said, excuse me, sir, but the only bridge, it's five miles from here. There's no bridge in here. But I crossed the bridge. They are coming behind me. Please help me. And the police said again, there's no bridge in here. It's 
five miles from here. There's nothing in here to cross that river. He said, please come outside. You'll see the bridge. They went outside. And what do you think they saw? There was no bridge. Only two guys pulling their horses out of the water. They saw the bridge. But when they were crossing, the bridge was gone. And that taught him a lesson. Because sometimes he thought that those miracles were written in the Bible were in the past. And they don't happen anymore. But then he, he realized that God is willing to do anything for us. To protect us, to help us. And that story was always in his heart because he remembered that no matter what you're doing or where you are, God's, God's protection is with you. Sometimes we see it, sometimes we don't, but it's good that we remember that he's always, always taking care of us. Uh, I hope you enjoy this story and you can go back to your seat. It is a tremendous privilege and opportunity for me at this time to baptize Faye Bullock. Faye, because of your commitment to Jesus Christ, to follow him wherever he leads, it is my privilege as a minister of the gospel to now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those of you who have witnessed a baptism here in the past know that I will never let an opportunity pass to allow the Holy Spirit to bring conviction to any heart that witnesses this baptism that they would like to be baptized. Not today, after adequate preparation, but they would like to indicate to God that yes, they hear that still small voice and they want to respond in a positive way. And so I invite each of you to bow your heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we are grateful to you for the privilege we have to identify with Jesus Christ in a way that you have given to indicate dying to self, being buried in the watery grave of baptism and then rising to a new life in Christ. And so, Father, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to extend the invitation to anyone who is here today that for whatever reason would like to be baptized into Christ. It may be a rebaptism, it may be for the first time by immersion. We ask that anyone here who would like to be baptized would indicate this by raising their hand just now. Father, we thank you so very much.
for the opportunities that you give us to respond to that still small voice. And we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is time for our tithes and offerings. Earlier this week, I had the opportunity, as many of you do, to go to a special place where I sat down in a special chair and this particular individual pulls my chair back and I get to open up my mouth nice and wide and, you know, share my teeth and everything else, you know, that's inside with them. You know, I do this twice a year like many of you do. I do that because I care about my teeth. I want to keep them, you know, until the day that I pass away. You know, but I think the lesson from that for me is that I want to take care of the things that are important to me, and accordingly, I hope that this church is important to you, and that We want to take care of it, much like our teeth, our vehicles, maintaining our homes, right? So I just encourage all of you to generously give today in the support of the local church budget. I'd like to invite the deacons to please come forward. Bow your heads with me, please. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the gift of the Sabbath. We are grateful for the symbol of you as our creator and as we witness today, our Redeemer. Father, we thank you for the blessings of our job, for the incomes that we raise, and that you provide for us. And in accordance to your words, We are now returning back to you what rightfully belongs to you, along with giving generously from our hearts. Please bless these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
by day and with each passing moment strength I find to meet my trials here trusting in my Father's wise bestowment I've no cause for worry or for fear He whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day what he deems best lovingly is part of pain and pleasure mingling toil with peace and rest every day the Lord himself is a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me. He whose name is Counselor and Power. The protection of his child and charge that on himself he laid. As your days, your strength shall be in measure. This the pledge to me he Help me then in every tribulation so to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not face weak consolation. Offer me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting have to take as from a Father's hand. One by one the days, the moments In just a few minutes, um, Faye will join me here at the front, and I will have the opportunity to give to her her certificate of baptism. And I would simply like to share with you once again the opportunity that you will have at the close of our service to extend your welcome, your personal welcome to say uh, to our fellowship and to the last day people of God. So uh, I'm going to invite her to join me at the door uh, after the service and give you that opportunity. And I know that 
uh, each of us looks forward to, to welcoming Faye for the decision that she has made. Um, I would like to remind each of us every time we have a birthing process, an, a, a new birth, we have a new relationship is that this life is fragile. It's very fragile and needs all the encouragement, the support that she can get. Um, Faye is... How can I say this? Is as um, sweetly as possible, a senior citizen, um, as am I. And it, so she, that, that means, you know, she's, she's established a lot of routine and habit in her life that is going to require some time to make the adjustment. Hey, please join me here. We're talking about you behind your back. <laughs> um, we are absolutely delighted that we have the privilege to welcome you as the newest member of the Greensboro Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we have a certificate of baptism that we want to give to you, and I trust that you will cherish this and also this indication of our love for you and God's love for you. And I was just explaining to the congregation that just as the petals of a rose are very fragile, um, they can be wounded easily. The same is true with a new life in Christ. And so we just want to encourage you uh, and strengthen you in your new walk as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And I would like to have you join me at the door following the, the service and allow each one of these brothers, new brothers and sisters in Christ to welcome you. Okay. So Thank take you. this as our expression of our love for you. God Thank bless you. This morning's scripture is from the New Testament from the book of 1 Timothy, and I'm reading chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Keep holding on to eternal life, which you were called and which you declared so well before many witnesses. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the reminding of these words. Fight. That doesn't sound like a very Christian word, does it? Fight. Fighting and warfare seem to be a, a normal part of life on earth. Historians tell us that the world has been at peace with no armed conflict. Only 8% of recorded history. All of recorded history. Only 8%. But there's one war that very few people seem to know about. Right now, there is a tremendous war raging all around us. And whether we like or not, every one of us is involved and affected by this war. Even though we cannot see it with our physical eyes. 
This war has greater significance than any war that has ever been fought on earth since the beginning of time. And it's impossible, as I say, to be neutral in this war. Everyone is on one side or the other. Even our participation is not on our terms. We don't decide when we want to fight and when we want to withdraw. Even without sensing it, sensing it we are constantly participating through our actions, the decisions that we make, and even our thoughts. Most Christians have forgotten that the Christian life is not a walk in the park, but a battlefield. As a result, very few of God's people are adequately armed, equipped, trained, and ready to fight the battle. But if we are to be successful in our life as a Christian then we must be prepared for that battle and ready to go to war. And the stakes are unbelievably high. The incomprehensible horror and suffering inflicted by physical war comes to an end at death. But the consequences of the spiritual war are eternal. It is literally the fight of your life for all eternity. There is a reason the Bible uses so many warfare metaphors and tells of so many battles. As the Apostle Paul well understood, the most serious challenge that believers face will not be from human enemies, but from spiritual assaults. He gave Christians specific advice on how to prepare for the inevitable attacks that would bombard them. He wrote to the Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we are not fighting against flesh and blood but against the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of the darkness around us, the evil spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. The Bible tells us we are in a cosmic conflict. It's much more than a local skirmish. And the stakes are high. Satan is doing everything he can to destroy you. Marriages and families are under relentless attack. God's standards and values are challenged, mocked, and ignored everywhere you turn. So whenever a person invites Jesus Christ into their heart and life, there is an immediate struggle that never quits. An unending war while living on this earth. From the cradle to the grave, there is a constant struggle for the minds and hearts of mankind. Satan attempts to overwhelm us in this war using the weakness of the flesh and the lures of the world. The Bible clearly shows that God and his people will ultimately win the war. Hallelujah. But until that time, the battles continue to rage. And we must remember that every battle, every battle is an opportunity to demonstrate our love for God for all the goodness He has shown to us. God wants us to be victorious. And so He trains us, equips us, and empowers us to win for His glory. Amen. But more than that, God sends reinforcements every time we need them. Think of it. A third of the angels followed Satan. But two-thirds of the angels still serve God. 
So right at the start, Satan is already outnumbered two to one. Further, the Bible says, He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Yes, Satan is stronger than you are. But he's already been defeated. Christ defeated him at the cross. So when you have Christ with you, you're on the winning side. No matter what or who comes your way, no, ma- no amount of blustering by the devil can defeat you as long as you ask Christ to fight the devil for you. But you can't go a wall and expect to win the battle. You have to be part of the resistance. Resist the devil, the Bible says, and he will flee from you. Now anybody who's been in the military knows what going AWOL means. It means absent without leave. And going AWOL guarantees your defeat. When you're tired, when you've had a conflict with your spouse, or child, when the economy drops and you didn't realize how much of your sense of security was in that 401k, when you're in the hospital emergency room or ICU with the love of your life or one of your kids and you're wondering whether they're going to make it, and you're tempted to believe that God's not a good God, when you've prayed and prayed and prayed and asked God for something and circumstances turn just the opposite, and you hear this little voice that says, See, God doesn't hear your prayers. Why are you trying to live this way? In all those situations, we're tempted to go AWOL. Going AWOL guarantees defeat. This is a spiritual battle. The fight is raging between faith and unbelief, between reliance on God and pride in ourselves, between hope for the future and despair. Your enemy, Satan, will try to defeat you, destroy you, get you to fall away from the faith. He'll try to distract you or make you ineffective in the service of the Lord. He'll tempt you, allure you, seduce you into great shame and vice. And if that doesn't work, he'll try to lull you into spiritual sleepiness and false security, getting you to let down your guard. Or you may prosper and be successful, become a a pillar of the community and a pillar in the church, and the devil will then tempt you toward pride or hypocrisy so you no longer feel dependent on God and His grace. Somehow you've earned all the good you enjoy. You deserve it. Your enemy will attack your mind, attack your emotions, attack your body, attack your relationships, attack every part of your life. And in all of these attacks, his purpose is to get your eyes off your Savior, Jesus Christ. One of his most successful strategies uses fear and intimidation because they're effective in taking our focus off of God. When we suddenly see a lion crouch to attack directly in front of us, everything else disappears. We don't notice the beautiful weather, the flowers, the birds singing, or even the weapon that might be in reach off to our side. 
All we see are the claws and the teeth in front of us as we imagine ourselves being destroyed by them. But God says not to be afraid. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and good judgment. And to back that up, Paul says that we've been given every weapon possible to defeat the enemy and give us victory. But we have to make use of what God has given us. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with verse 13, For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand your ground on the evil day and having done everything to stand. Stand firm, therefore, by fastening the belt of truth around your waist, by putting on the breastplate of righteousness, by fitting your feet with the preparation that comes from the good news of peace. And in all of this, by taking up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray at all times in the Holy Spirit with prayer and request. And stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. So God has given us every possible weapon for spiritual warfare, both defensive and offensive. And our greatest weapon, our greatest weapon of all, is prayer. Our battle is real. Our enemy is powerful. And so we always have to be ready to fight, and nothing makes Satan weak in the knees more than we are when we are on our knees. So pray. What do you pray for in a spiritual battle? According to Paul, we pray for perseverance, the ability to stay steady, keep going, and not quit. Pray for wisdom, to not waste this opportunity to demonstrate the grace of God as others are watching you face these difficulties. We're to pray for others, including fellow believers, who are also fighting battles of their own. And pray for future recruits. This should always be part of our prayers. If we're not praying for future recruits in the battle, we're ignoring one of the most important parts of prayer. And as we prepare to Storm the camp of the enemy by holding public evangelistic meetings in just a month, month and a half, six weeks. If we don't bathe the entire effort in prayer, we cannot expect a great victory for God. And I cannot overemphasize that. Finally, pray for victory. If you fight the battle the way God wants you to fight it, armed with His truth and depending on Him in prayer, I guarantee He will give you a victory you have never known before. Your greatest joys will come from the greatest victories you experience after your greatest battles. But there will be casualties. There will be casualties. And we have to learn to accept that. The fighting is fierce. And while victory is certain, there will be casualties. Just like brave young men and women soldiers are willing to give their lives for their country and count it a privilege to serve. As Christians, We should be willing to give up our lives for Christ 
and count it a privilege to serve our Lord even when it involved persecution. As we prepare for battle, we need to understand that the world will hate us for what we stand for. I think we are beginning to see in our society some demonstrations, some beginnings of what hate will do. We must never forget that while persecution and even death may come our way, we can know that it's an honor and a privilege to suffer for the cause of Christ. That's hard. I didn't hear any amens. Amen. But it's a fact. We must count it a privilege to suffer for the cause of Christ. We must prepare our minds to have the right attitude about this. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, as a loyal soldier of Christ Jesus, accept your share of of suffering. Whoever serves in the military wants to please their commanding officers so they don't waste time with non-military activities. Here, here. One of the most effective weapons the enemy has, our spiritual enemy, is forgetting that we're in the fight of our life. The best defense is a strong offense. You ever heard that before? The best defense is a strong offense. In 1857, the United States was in spiritual, political, and economic decline. Slavery Rebellion and rumors of war were spreading across the country. And then financial panic hit. Banks failed. Railroads went bankrupt. Factories closed. Unemployment increased. Three years later, Americans turned on each other and made bloody history. Over a million Americans were killed by Americans in the Civil War. But in 1857, another kind of history was being made in New York City. It's the kind of history you don't read about in textbooks. On September 23, 1857, a Christian layman named Jeremiah Lanfear. Y'all know him, right? Famous name. <laughs> a Christian layman, Jeremiah Lanfear, held his first ever businessman's prayer meeting in Lower Manhattan. It was not by any account a rousing success. He had passed out flyers inviting people to come for weeks. And only six men attended, arriving 30 minutes late. But week by week, 
Jeremiah's tiny lunch hour prayer meeting grew larger and larger. By December, his six men had grown to not 100, not 1,000, but 10,000. And they met not once a week, but every day. The New York newspapers took notice. And when word spread to other cities, revival broke out across the entire country. In Cleveland and St. Louis, thousands packed churches and theaters three times every day just to pray. And all across America, pastors were baptizing 20,000 new believers every week. All across the nation, the results of the prayer meeting revivals were overwhelming. City crime dropped dramatically. A report from Atlanta, Georgia said the prayer meeting revivals were so influential that the Atlanta Police Department had to let half its force go because there simply was not enough crime for them to deal with. The world had seen nothing like it. Before or since, it was revival on a global scale. And God started it with one man. So what do you think? Can history repeat itself? Could it happen again? According to God, one person and prayer can move heaven and earth. Is your spiritual armor in place? Are you on high alert and ready for battle? Can your fellow soldiers count on you? Or have you been too casual about your obligations as a soldier for Christ? What adjustments do you need to make so you're an effective soldier who honors God by the way you serve Him? We never know when our turn will come to lay down the weapons of warfare. It doesn't come at a certain age. It doesn't come with retirement. The fight against the devil is a lifelong fight. It's the fight of your life. And we desperately need to say to stay engaged to the very end so that at the end we can say with Paul, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. The crown of victory, a crown of righteousness is now waiting for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on the day that He comes. And not only to me, but also to all who eagerly wait for His appearing. To overcome our enemy in the power of the Holy Spirit, we must remain unwavering in our confidence in God and determined never to accept defeat. A story from the Korean War, I believe, illustrates this attitude. As enemy forces advanced, Baker Company was cut off from the rest of their unit. For several hours, no word was heard from them, even though headquarters repeatedly tried to communicate with the missing troops. Finally, a faint signal was received. Straining to hear, the communication corpsman asked, Baker Company, do you read me? 
This is Baker Company, came the reply. What is your situation? The enemy is to the east of us. The enemy is to the west of us. The enemy is to the north of us. The enemy is to the south of us. And then after a brief pause, the sergeant from Baker Company said with determination, so the enemy can't get away from us now. <laughs> Although surrounded and outnumbered, he was thinking of victory, not defeat. My friends, we are in the fight of our lives, but victory belongs to us. The Apostle Paul was confident, thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has given each one of you the privilege of fighting not only for yourself but for Him. And He promises victory if you will just stand up and fight for Him. Amen. Father in Heaven, thank You so very much for sending Your Son, Jesus, to ensure victory in this spiritual warfare. Thank you so very much for providing every possible weapon that we could use. Thank you for the privilege that you give us to honor you as we fight the enemy sin Father in heaven I pray for each precious one who is here today that they will accept the challenge to actively be involved in the fight of their life to bring honor and glory to you. Help us, Father, to stand up and fight for you. Not for ourselves, but for you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of consecration number 618. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
Father in heaven, thank you so very much for being with us in a very special way. We ask that you continue to go with each one of us the remaining hours of this your holy Sabbath day. That as we begin another week, all those around us cannot help but see and know we are part of the resistance and we are ready to fight to the end because we serve a victorious God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.